Hi, everybody. So welcome to uh, a demonstration of what we're going to be really talking about uh, doing the Metacast series of Gravity Assist, which was originally hosted by former chief scientist of NASA, Jim Green, who's been doing these episodes for NASA over the last couple of years. Jim, so welcome to the stage. If you let everybody know a bit about yourself and tell us about Gravity Assist. Well, I've been in NASA for more than 40 years and I've experienced all kinds of things from writing scientific papers to in being involved in more than two dozen missions. But one of the things that I really thoroughly enjoy is talking about science to the public. Science isn't done until we communicate it. And a few years ago, NASA connected with me on a new idea to reach the public, developing a podcast that I called Gravity Assist. And we made more than 100 episodes in, in over the next four or five years. These episodes were all about talk, some of the great discoveries that NASA is making by fabulous scientists and engineers and how they actually really uh, work behind the scenes to make fabulous things happen for NASA. You know, NASA does things that look like miracles, but in reality, it's done with the people. Now, to get in the job we're in, they have to be able to be excited, be propelled forward, just like a planet does when we fly by it, and we call that process a gravity assist. And that's where the name comes from. Those people in this business have had help to get where they are. And that gravity assist, we want to extend now into the metaverse. Jim, we've often talked about this, how oh, NASA yeah. has really connected with the communities by bringing in different disciplines, like your work in the Martian. So tell us why that was so important before we kick off this demonstration about what we're talking about. Well, NASA also has the opportunity to be able to um, uh, interact with the uh, film industry, the music industry in many different ways. This has really been a fantastic opportunity for NASA to have people that are in the arts express themselves in many different ways. I had the privilege to work on the movie called The Martian. Now, if you've seen The Martian, I hope you will have enjoyed it. It's as realistic look as to what may happen to humans trying to live and work on the planet Mars as ever been filmed before. And so, although it's science fiction, you know, humans haven't arrived on Mars, and some things that you see in the film aren't really possible on Mars, it is indeed still the very best depiction of humans living and working on the red planet. This is so important for us to be able, I think, to communicate the excitement of exploring not only the Earth, but going beyond the Earth into our solar system and into the universe. This is the James Webb Space Telescope. It's 6.9 times the size of the most powerful telescope NASA's ever launched, which is the Hubble Space Telescope. This newly arrived telescope is now making fabulous observations in the infrared. And because the infrared is just all about heat, we have to be able to cool the telescope. And that's why we have this huge shade that is right below the mirror. This shade is about the size of a tennis court. And not only that, it's not only one shade, but it's actually five layers of this very thin material that help cool the telescope and shade it from the heat of the sun and the heat of the earth. This allows Webb to make beautiful observations of, of stars that are forming and galaxies that are, are forming far, far away. And, and even some of the uh, uh, clouds on our moon, Titan, which orbits Saturn. So it's a fabulous telescope, and it's been working so well ever since it was launched last year and put into commission recently.
So now what we're going to do is show you uh, uh, what we plan to do with our Metacasts. And now I'm going to let Jim take it away. Jim, it's your show. When we look out in the sky at night, we see the beautiful black area that we call sky with stars and galaxies and many other things. But sometimes we have the opportunity to look back and see our beautiful blue earth. The earth we know, we fly around, it's huge, but it is only one of many large objects in our solar system. Another large object in our solar system is the planet Neptune. This is a beautiful blue planet, 10 times the mass of the earth, made of gases of hydrogen, helium, but ammonia and water. But the biggest gas giant that we have in our solar system is indeed Jupiter. Jupiter is 300 times the mass of the Earth. And if it was a fishbowl, we would put a thousand Earths inside it. But even Jupiter is small in comparison to our large sun. Our sun has the massive amounts of hydrogen and helium that then get crunched together inside the sun as that hydrogen is converted into more and more helium, providing the light that we have in our, bathed in our solar system that allows life to exist. But even our sun is a small star. There are other stars that have even more mass than our sun, such as Vega. Now these stars burn very bright and very blue and they don't live nearly as long as our own star. And we study them because we want to understand the evolution of our own sun. Another beautiful red star is this one, and it's called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is part of a constellation that we see in the Northern Hemisphere called Orion during the winter months. And this is a wonderfully large star. In fact, it is so large uh, that we sometimes see sunspots on it. If we brought it to where the sun is, the earth would be inside this beautifully large red giant. But it also is small in comparison to even bigger stars. These large stars are going through all kinds of different phases where their surfaces are puffed out, causing them to turn red. And then over time, they shrink to smaller and smaller objects before they puff out again. And some of these stars are even larger than the, the star Betelgeuse. But these are only a few of the objects that are part of our overall solar system and galaxy we call Milky Way. When we look also in the Southern Hemisphere, we see other collections of stars. And these stars are forming a galaxy called the Andromeda Galaxy. This galaxy is very close. And our galaxy is pulling it closer to us over time. And one day, well into the future, this galaxy will interact with our own, passing through as galaxies do in our beautiful universe. Our universe is huge, it's enormous, but we can only see so much of it. It requires the light from different galaxies to come to the Earth. Galaxies that are forming and continue to form from past star clusters and indeed form strings of galaxies that we call part of our universe. It's important that we study these elements to really understand our place in the solar system and our place in the Milky Way and our place in the universe and what the evolution of our planet will be into the future.